I was recently playtesting a multiplayer game with a friend of mine in Australia. Now I'm based in the UK and the server we were playing on was in North Europe, so my ping was fine, but his, well it wasn't great. In most games you wouldn't let people from these two regions play together because someone's going to have a horrible experience connecting to a server 9000 miles away. But since we were testing a turn based game the ping was less of an issue. In fact this was pretty ideal for testing because you want to know how a game will react in poor network conditions. When latency is high and the likelihood of messages being lost in transmission is also high, you want to be confident that this doesn't lead to weird unexpected situations and that your game can handle it. And for a while everything was working fine. There was lag and dropped packets but the game accounted for it and made sure that any lost communication was eventually transmitted between the client and the server. But that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But then something bad happened. The games got desynced. For reasons I still don't completely understand, the system I implemented to ensure that messages from the server always reached the client failed. One player made a move and in their game something happened, but in the other game... Consequently, what each player saw on their screen was different and this desynchronization ended up causing the game to break a couple moves later. Now desyncing in multiplayer games is nothing new and I'm not claiming that this is some profound discovery. But what it did make me realise is that whenever you're building something that is going to be interacted with by users, especially when networking is involved, anything that can go wrong will probably go wrong. And I thought I had accounted for this by writing a system that made it mathematically impossible for clients to desync. But that was naive of me. What I should have done is written a system that made it impossible for clients to desync and then written a backup system for when clients did end up desyncing. Because I assumed the game couldn't desynchronize, I had no way to resynchronize the game, and consequently it broke, which obviously isn't ideal. So I ended up rewriting my original system that was supposed to ensure that clients didn't desync in the first place. I fixed what I thought might be the issue, but since reproducing bugs in multiplayer games is an actual nightmare, I can't be certain I've completely prevented desyncs. I mean, I thought the original system prevented desyncs, but clearly I was wrong. And so I also added logic to handle any desynchronization of clients and took a much harsher approach to testing networking conditions. Previously, I thought that merely simulating bad network conditions would be enough. That if I tested the game with a ping of over 1500 milliseconds and 50% packet loss, which is an almost unrealistically bad connection, if I did this, the fact that the game worked fine meant that the networking was rock solid. But that was the naive me, the old me. Now I simulate what happens when I block certain messages from being received altogether, what happens when I delete half the game objects on a client's screen, or add new objects from out of nowhere. Does the game break, or does it handle it? Now maybe not originally doing this is just me being a noob, but with even AAA games having multiplayer bugs or other game breaking bugs where players can reach areas they aren't supposed to, I think maybe we don't take Murphy's Law serious enough. And that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong, and you better make damn sure your game can handle that.